So back in 2010, I released the original Lean Paper Airplane Simulation videos. All these years later, I still get emails about how to run it. This video will provide tips and pointers so you can run it yourself. So here's what I'm going to take you through. I'd like to go through a brief history, what you need to run it. I'm going to walk you through the fold step by step. We're going to go through the craft run, the mass production run, the lean run, and then there's an advanced run that probably most of you hadn't seen. It's hidden within these perfection series. And I'm gonna go ahead and post a link to all those videos so you guys can take a look for yourselves. This simulation was created by one of my partners by the name of Chris Foss in the early 1990s. In the early 90s, there was no PowerPoint. So consultants had to fly with these big stacks of clear sheets that had all of their materials printed on them. Those would then be put on an overhead for them to sort of present off of. In addition to that, the consultants would have to fly or ship off a big box of Legos used for a lean simulation. Parts would inevitably get lost, and at times the box wouldn't even show up to the client. So what Chris wanted to do was create a simulation where all the supplies would be readily available at any given client site. All right, guys, so here's what you need to run the simulation. First, you need a stack of paper. So you could run to the copier to get the stack, but what I'd recommend you do is go to the recycle bin and dig out about 100 sheets of paper. You're gonna be recycling or throwing away this paper anyway, so there's no need to use new paper. The second thing you need is a simple black marker. You need two stopwatches, but since everybody has a phone, just ask for two volunteers to use their phone. The next thing you'll need is a flip chart to write down all of your metrics. And the last thing you'll need is six volunteers. Now, if you're only running this with one group, six volunteers is all you need. But I've also run it in large auditoriums with multiple groups. Okay, so let me talk about the folds a bit. So I've seen other airplane simulations online and they've balanced out the folds. The folds are not meant to be balanced by station. It was designed that way by Chris. He wanted to make sure that whip would build up at different stations. So if you look, station four has four folds and that's on purpose. He wants whip to build up. Station one only has one fold. So after station one, we're going to see a huge amount of whip build up because station two has two folds. So don't try to redesign the plane. I recommend you run the simulation the way the plane is designed currently. Also note that the plane isn't meant to fly. The plane is meant, again, to be in balance and it's not meant to fly. All right, guys, so let's walk through the folds of this paper airplane and switch this out. All right. Before we get started with the simulation, I'm going to demonstrate how to build this paper airplane. Really simple. First thing you do is make a fold down the middle. Okay, so let me pause there for a sec, right? So really easy. All you do is go ahead and take a sheet of paper and literally fold it down the middle. Now, notice I wrote model on this plane because when you're running the simulation, and there's lots of whip all around, they'll accidentally send the model through unless you write it on here. So please, ahead of time, build these and write model on each of your models. Then you fold the nose piece. Then right, so let me demonstrate that for you. So look, you're gonna get a sheet of paper like this and you're going like this and then folding this in, okay? So nothing too complex, okay? So this is what it kind of looks like at the end. Okay, let me just hold that up for you over here so you can see that, okay? And you fold the wings. Okay, so folding the wings down, all we're doing is folding these down here and this down here, okay? So. On the model, make sure that this bottom piece is straight. The wing is flush with sort of the center fuselage. And again, please write model on your plane. Then you fold the tips. Okay, so this is what I was talking about. This is actually kind of complex. So I'll kind of walk you through this guy. So let me make sure I'm doing this over here again. It's, it's models written on here. So it's four folds all together, four folds. The first fold, I'll walk you through one at a time. That was kind of fast, but here we go. Is this, okay? All I did was, you see this? I take this edge right here and I fold it up. That's fold number one, okay? The next fold is on that same side. I'm taking the bottom part 
I'm taking this and I'm folding it upward. Okay. So let me walk you through that again. All right. So first thing I go like this and then I fold this up. All right. One more time, this corner piece right here. And then I fold this upward. Okay. Then we do that on the other side. So, so this is, this is like this on the other side. I am going to do the same thing. So let me just do that with you live right here. So this piece goes up. You see this corner piece right here? Around like that. And then I fold this bottom piece up. Flush with the rest of the plane right here. See this? Okay. So fold this up and then fold this up. Okay. And again, on the other side, it's same thing. Fold this up and then this up. Four folds, four folds. Just two folds on each side. And that's it. So this is the first run of the simulation. I'll All right. So let me pause there for a second. So if there's a place that's already running on an assembly line or they understand division of labor, I skip that run. But let's just say you're in an area where they do the job from beginning to end and you think they'll benefit from breaking up the work, then run this first run. Okay, so this this first sort of craft model, right? So I've seen that um, in order entry areas. So it's not just manufacturing, but even order entry areas where it's this long, cumbersome process um, that takes a long time to learn. Uh, they saw a lot of benefit in breaking it up into smaller and smaller chunks and running it down an assembly line. So. Again, this is kind of optional, but let's just run through and watch them. One more thing I do want to point out is how to kick off this run. As with any of the runs, you don't want to at first give them too much instruction. You just say, all right, guys, I need six volunteers. You guys are going to get five minutes to build this plane right here. OK, so give everyone one of these models. OK, so build these ahead of time, six of these things ahead of time and hand them out. But say, all right, let them study it for a little bit and say, okay, we have five minutes, guys, to build as many of these things as you can, okay? So give everyone the model and say, on your market set, go. Start the run, okay? So I'm going to mute it while it's running. Let me switch over to, well, give you guys a better view of what's going on here. So you see all these guys, they're kind of building it. They think they're getting it right. They're not exactly sure. They're kind of figuring it out. Okay, so he's so frustrated, he kind of crumbles it up. One thing I want to point out here is the X plane. Have this X ready to go. Just saves you a little bit of time. And as soon as this X plane gets inserted during any of your runs, that's when the second timer goes off. Okay. So the first person who is timing, they're timing the five minutes. The second person timing is watching this X plane go through. So one thing you want to watch for is sometimes the X plane doesn't even make it through. So at that point, you just kind of estimate how long it would have, or you can put down the time that it actually the simulation ended. But if the five minutes is up and that X plane has been in there for two minutes, you would just write two minutes plus in the metrics area. Okay. So just have this ready, instruct the second timer ahead of time that, Hey, when I put this in, make sure you stop your start, you start your stopwatch. And when you're done, when this thing exits out or when the timer stops, go ahead and uh, stop your timer. One thing too is when they see this X plan, they sometimes want to treat it special. They'll rush it through. Don't let them do that. Say, just treat this like a regular plane, okay? All right, so here are the KPIs. So when I present the KPIs, first of all, have these written out ahead of time on your flip chart, okay? So space, work in process, good, the 
or and then the percentage good, the lead time, the number of people, um, time and the productivity. Okay. So first of all, space, right? Four tables. Um, sometimes things get weird, uh, where they're kind of spread out. So one table over here, one table over there. So it doesn't really show you how much space you've truly used. At that point, it might be easier to just use ceiling tiles. Ceiling tiles are usually two by two. So you can say, count them off one, two, three, four, five, six. And then, so that's 12 feet. Or again, you can leave it in terms of ceiling tiles. And then if it spans the whole room and there's another six over here, so that's um, 12 by 12, you can say 144 square feet. Or again, you can leave it in terms of ceiling tiles, right? So however you think is the best way to do it. Work in process. So you tell them when they stop to count up the whip for you. So when they're finished, you just say, okay, guys, tell me uh, how many you had. So they just said, they, they, this guy says six, this guy says five, this guy says, so just start adding them up and then you put in the whip as you go. Good. Now, how many of these things are good? That's a great question. What do I call good? So one of the things I try to look for is I open it up and look at the center. So if there's like a fold like this, I call it bad. Or if the nose piece isn't quite touching, I call that bad. A lot of times bad, you can just tell automatically the folds aren't right in the first place. That that These last four folds really throw people for a loop a lot of times. So it's really up to you as far as a judgment call goes. At this early in this in the in the process, a lot of times uh, the, the the planes just aren't that good anyway. They're not going to be very good. I've I've had entire runs where only one of them were good. I've, I've trashed a bunch of them. When they're rushed, they're going to produce a bunch of bad planes anyway. So don't get too hung up on what uh, you're calling good versus making sure that you use the same criteria all the way through. Um, it, it's a pretty loose definition, and you just uh, come up with it. As far as productivity goes, remember that's good parts per person per time. So take good four divided by by people, divide that by six and divide that by five as in five minutes. Okay. So four divided by six people divided by five. So this is run two. This is run two of the simulation. Okay. So again, most of the time I don't run the first run, the craft model run, right? So I usually start with this. Okay, where it's, which is sort of the push production. Okay, so I'm going to walk you through how to kick off this simulation. Okay, so let's just say we don't run the first one and I'm only running this, this mass production model. Okay, so I'll ask the group, okay, I need six total volunteers. Okay, we're going to be making paper airplanes. So who would like to be my first volunteer? So somebody's going to raise their hand and I'm going to say, okay, what you need to do is I, you're going to get a sheet of paper and you're gonna to need to fold it in half. And I demonstrate that in front of the room so they can kind of see what that means with this built model, okay? So I hand that over to them, okay? So they're, they're good to go. Then I go to the, I'll say, I need the next volunteer. So inevitably all of them, a lot of them would raise their hand. Don't pick the person next to the person you just gave this model to, because it's too close. What you want to do is create distance. You want to create waste as much as you can. So if that person was in the far corner, pick someone close to the front of the room and then give them the second run. Then demonstrate this or the, the second model. Demonstrate this and give that to them. So one person's way over here, one person's over there. Then you say, okay, guys, I need my third volunteer. People raise their hand, pick someone again, far away, far away from station two. So this thing has to travel. Okay. You don't want to go right next to them. Okay. So then demonstrate that, fold this down and then fold this down. Okay. Last you show them now this, this time you were for, for this one, right? So again, assuming we didn't run the first craft model, you want to take a little bit of time to show them how to do this. Not too much because it's good if they kind of mess up. But you do want to show them fold this and this, then fold this, then this. And you guessed it. Don't put this next to the person that just did station three. You want this far away. Okay. So I put those away. Then I say, okay, who wants to be my material handler? Okay. So the material handler, what I tell them is, we invested a lot in this new material handling system. 
what it does, it carries any multiple of three. So my folders, any of you guys with these paper models that you're, you're folding, what you guys need to do is anytime you have any multiple of three, three, six, nine, 12, as long as you build three, stack them up and you say, hey, Joey, hey, Joey, okay, or whoever, whatever the person's name is, whoever the, uh, the, the material handler is. So none, none of these sheets, tell the class, none of these sheets should be moving until you, I hear, hey, Joey. And Joey is the only one who's supposed to be moving these sheets. <clears throat> what this does is adds an element of chaos to the room because you'll hear, hey, Joey, hey, Joey, hey, Joey. He doesn't know where to go, right? So any multiple of three, we want them. And, and more the more, the better, right? So tell them to stack them up. Three, 36, doesn't matter. But say, hey, Joey, and just let them, let them start moving these things. The next thing is the manager. So whoever gets picked for the, the manager job, um, you just tell them your job is to help coordinate what's going on. The reality is they really don't have a job. Right. So all they're doing is kind of running around and just, you know, telling people to work faster. There's really not much for the manager to do in this model. We want the manager to show that we can build a system that doesn't necessarily need a manager. OK, um, have the group uh, clear the aisleways or clear the areas that are around the tables that they will be running back and forth in. You don't want anybody to fall down. Um, for the runner specifically, make sure they're wearing, you pick somebody that's wearing comfortable shoes because they're going to be running back and forth. And again, you don't want them to trip on anything. So let's see how this kind of runs. The first is it speeds up the learning curve. It'll take a yeah, while for me to learn that for the time being. So you see the this gentleman in the blue shirt here. I'm showing here that these things kind of cr crisscross, you know, showing a really poor flow. So it's moving around here. See the chaos, you see. Uh, one thing as well, on station one, they're not creating enough whip. You can kind of tell them, no one says you gotta fold one at a time. You know, plant that sort of bad habit, that, that, that push habit into their head and say, you know, take three of them and you can stack them together and crease them together. Why, why not? That'll get corrected in the next run, but um, it's a sort of a good kind of trick um, artificial booster to the whip. What I do also is um, I add to the chaos as well by telling them, hurry up, hurry up, you know, what's going on? You know, where's my plane? Where's my plane? And, you know, just kind of kind of make it fun. Now, at a certain point, you're going to want to enter. You're going to want to insert your X plane. OK, so once when I do that or, you know, I wait till at least all the stations are full. The line is wet all the way through and then I'll put in this X plane. Right. But oftentimes it's better if you wait till there's a lot more whip and then you put it in at roughly at the two minute mark or so. You should be fine um, in this run. So there's the X plane right now. It's going through in this run. Note that. Oftentimes the X plane doesn't make it through. So I have to write down like, uh, you know, I asked the timer, how long did it take? And they say, you know, uh, the simulation ended, the five minutes ended and my stopwatch is only at, you know, two minutes and 30 seconds. And then I say, okay, well then when I write down how long it took the, the X plane, which is the lead time, when I write, when you see lead time in there, that's this plane right here. Um, that is, uh, I would just write two minutes and 30, two minutes and 40 something seconds plus. Okay. Um, why is this X plane important? It's because I don't care about the other orders. Okay. So this is my order. So let's just say I ordered a pizza. If there's a ton of pizza out there and everybody's getting their pizza, that, that's great. That's great for Domino's, whoever, but I ordered my pizza and it took four hours to get through. That's, this is my order. Okay. In a healthcare setting, this is, you know, your, your patient's getting through, right? So it, it's great that the doctor is always staying busy and, you know, patients are flowing through the clinic, but this is, this is me, this is me waiting, right? So I, I came in on time. I was ready for my appointment at nine 30, but I didn't get seen until 10 45, you know? So th this is representing your specific order. What I like to ask at the very end is how did this simulation feel? They'll say it was chaotic you know, disorganized. I, I, I felt anxiety. I've heard. Uh, then you ask them, how often do you guys feel this way at work? And a lot of times people will start to draw those conclusions like, oh, you know, that's, 
that's that's true. I mean, it 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 does feel pretty chaotic sometimes at work. You know, it just kind of draws sort of a parallel between what happens at work versus what you're doing. The other thing too is ask them about the whip. So you see, I, there was 57 pieces of work and process in this in this uh, simulation, this run of the simulation. Oftentimes, is much higher. And so ask them, what's the limit? How high could the whip have gone? The answer is, is there's infinite. It's however much paper you had, how much papers in the world, the whip would just continue to grow because there's nothing holding it back, right? So that's where we set up the next simulation. The next run of the simulation is with the post-it notes, there is a specific limit that they're allowed to have. And there's, it's the cap. They can't exceed it. Okay, so this is the um, quality at the source that I'm talking about right now. So um, that's just a piece of flooring with three screws um, kind of screwed in there. So what that does is when I put a piece of paper in there, and I guess I'll, I'll, my young me will do a better job of showing uh, how this works, but you just put the piece of paper in there like this. And when you make the fold, because if there's a nail here, here, and here, the fold is perfect every single time. If you don't have one of those, that, that's fine. You don't need that. You just tell them on this next run, be careful about how you fold. So this is another way I'm teaching you sort of to break it up here. So remember I said station one, if you recall, only has one fold to do, right? So I'm gonna pause here for a second. Station one has this fold to do, right? So, and it takes a number of seconds to do and you can have them time it. Station two has two folds to do. You can see the yellow and the orange, there's two folds to do. Station three has this fold and this fold to do. And station four has four folds to do, right? So it's one, two, and then three, four, okay? One, two, three, four. So you can see that on there on, on the screen. So for this next run, this lean run, you can do a rebalance if you want, or if you just want to leave it the same, it's it, it's also fine, right? So if you just want to, to, you don't want to retrain everybody on the different folds and you just rather say, okay, what can I do with these post-it notes and my institute poll? How will that impact our run? That That's fine. Just, just go ahead and run it the way it is. In this case, we redistributed the work. Um, sometimes I use that in sort of an intermediate uh, as another run of the simulation. So first time I, I say, go ahead and run it the way it is so everybody kind of just does their folds again except with the post-it notes that, that kind of stop them from producing um, but if you redistribute you can get a little bit of a uh, more productivity out of them so in this case i'm showing you right there that you know we redistributed the work and um you know that again that's sometimes a, a third run now for this next run sort of this this lean run we just got done with the um previous run, which is uh, mass production. In this run, you want the operators to sort of discover, or the whole team to discover what they can do to increase productivity. So you'll end up usually with four workers, actually push them towards that four workers, okay? The manager and the material handler don't add any value to the run, okay? So just removing those two people will add to the productivity because that's good parts per person per time. If you take out people, productivity goes up. Now, remember, guys, remember, always, never, ever say that these people are getting fired, right? That's not the purpose of lean. What you say is when these people exit the line or exit this area, you say, okay, would you guys be willing to go work in a separate area and see if these operators are able to do it without you, manager, or without you, material handler? They're, they're good sports about it. They understand the exercise. But always make sure you emphasize that in lean, nobody is getting fired. Now, at this point, you probably won't need the material handler or the manager. Okay. So, but you don't want to say that. You want the operators, actually, you want all of them to come to that conclusion together. So once you show them, okay, what what was wrong with the last part of the with the last run, right? The first thing they'll say is, okay, well, we were so far apart. Well, tell them to move together okay that's a, that's a good thing so tell them move side by side so sequence themselves one two three four one additional trick is if you're measuring uh taking measurements by the table um sometimes what they'll do is they'll put two tables together right so there'll be you know two tables and actually you'll see that right and that's kind of how the room was set up when we filmed it um two tables so you're still using two and they're kind of sitting in this square what you can tell them to do is take away one table 
and or or they'll sit in a line and it'll still be two tables. Tell them to use one table and sit around it. So if you're using four total tables before, you'll get that down to one. The next thing you want to ask them, so don't give them the solution. What you want to say is, okay, I'm going to give you some post-it notes, okay? What I want you to do is figure out a way to control your whip using these post-it notes, but you can't touch these post-it notes during your run, okay? So make it easy on them or a little easier on them. Just give them three post-it notes and say, all right, guys, what are you going to do? to use these post-it notes so you don't end up with 57 pieces of whip in the next run. So they'll do some discussions, you know, maybe you can give them some hints every now and then you can, you know, for example, talk about, you know, at, at the Brazilian steakhouse, you know, they, if you leave your card on green, they know to come to you, right? They know to come. Um, sometimes that works. Sometimes that means, oh, okay, I'll just use this post-it note and keep flipping it. You don't want them to touch the post-it note. What you want them to do is, have the post-it note in between each station and only produce when that post-it note is, is empty, right? So eventually they'll get there, right? Trust me, just don't, don't give them the answer. The, half the fun of it is them figuring it out themselves. There's three, so one post-it note between each station and make them come up with the rule themselves. Say, okay, you can only produce when this post-it note is empty. So, Keep in mind that some of them will still want to overproduce. And when you do that, when the run starts, tell them, no, nah, no, nope, remember the rule, remember the rule. And they'll be itching. They'll be itching to want to keep pushing a piece of paper. But you say, okay, no, you can only start work when that post note is empty. Then you can start folding and, and place it. Station one, usually because they only have one fold, they'll be ready to go. The, 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 they should be ready to go. So oftentimes, They'll be really wanting to reach for that next piece of paper, but you said, tell them, no, you're only authorized to work when that post-it note is empty. So let's see how this kind of works here. So we're kind of coming around here and we're putting post-it notes down. Okay, so they're starting to run. That's good. Um, one thing, another point of emphasis before you start, uh, they want to beat their record, their previous record. And no doubt in my mind, I've never seen a model or a simulation where they haven't beat the first run, um, the second run, whichever run you're starting with, with this run. Okay. So tell them to calm down, right? Tell, point them over to the metrics and say, look, last time you only produced two good planes. Okay. So in five minutes, all you got to do is produce good two good planes. So take a deep breath, make sure each fold is good and don't pass on a defect. Make sure the folds are really good because if someone's having to rework it for you, then it, it defeats the purpose. So just make sure to take a deep breath and calm down. When you do that, while well, it really calms our nerves and say, okay, let's see how you go. In this run, what I recommend for you as a, as a facilitator is um, don't say much. You know, every now and then say, okay, slowly guys, pace it right. You know, make the for make sure the folds are nice and crisp. But other than that, don't say much. Make make sure the environment's kind of serene. And let me continue going here. Okay, I'm gonna fast forward a bit. So Okay, so also make sure, uh, don't forget your X plane that always needs to go in. And in this case, it'll come out uh, predictably, you know, rather than very erratically if you were to run this over and over. I mean, because everybody's running off a pull system. So uh, you shouldn't have a problem getting that through. Just just do it when the, the line is wet, when everybody has a, uh, has a uh, plane, a piece of whip in front of them. Uh, should it make it out in, in no time? So here's here's kind of a demonstration of the uh, mistake proofing tool that we made, and see these guys being very patient and waiting for their plane to come through. Okay, guys. So this is the perfection run, right? So a lot of you guys haven't seen this. So I'm going to actually turn on the audio for this one. And uh, I'll make some comments after, so let's see. So here it is as we ran the real model. 
a red W or withdrawal card is pulled. The empty blue bin in the two bin system is taken by the material handler and placed on the cart. The red W card tells her to withdraw a red plane. So she first takes out the red P card or production card and places it into the yellow Kanban post. She then removes the red plane from the bin. The empty bin is then moved. Okay, so inside of each of these is a production Kanban card, okay? And she put that into the yellow production Kanban post and she took back the W, the withdrawal card, okay? So there's a production Kanban and a withdrawal Kanban card. Move next to the production Kanban post for the convenience of the operators. She takes the red plane over to the shipping department. She then goes over to the material replenishment area and drops off the empty blue bin in the blue color-coded area. She picks up a full blue bin to replenish what the cell has consumed on the previous run. She drops off the red W card in the withdrawal Kanban post and then pulls the next W card in the sequence, which is another W red card. She replaces the missing blue raw material bin with the full bin she picked up earlier. She takes an empty red bin from the raw materials area. This makes sense because a red plane was made on the previous run. The red W card she got on the board tells her she needs to withdraw a red plane, so she pulls the red P card out of the bin and puts it in the Kanban post. She takes the plane and leaves the empty bin near the production Kanban post. She drops off the red plane and then the red bin and picks up a full red bin to replace what she just dropped off. She places the W card in the Kanban post and withdraws the next card in the sequence. So while this is going on, all other functions are working together to support the smooth pace of production. When she drops off a P card, this causes a chain reaction in the work cell. Workers react by producing just that color. Once complete, they place the plane back in the bin with the associated production card so it's ready for the next time the material handler makes a loop. The material prep department also reacts to the pull from the customer. Notice that when the material handler drops off an empty blue bin, it is immediately filled. Also notice that a full set of raw materials is kept in a two bin system so the material handler doesn't have to wait for the material prep department to fill an empty bin. She can continue moving by dropping off an empty bin and picking up a full one. Okay, guys, so um, I don't expect you guys to go through and um, run that last run. Um, that was just for educational purposes. It's not really hard to build. So you saw that it's just cardboard, putting on some W and production Kanban cards together, um, some some bins. In fact, these bins back here are the same ones that I used back then. Um, so uh, you can go to Home Depot, buy some bins and uh, use them for the two bin system, setting up a U-shaped cell. It's uh, not that complex. Just wanted to show you all the different or a lot of different components of lean kind of uh, working together in, in one working model. All right, guys. So that was kind of a behind the scenes of how to run the uh, lean simulation. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments below. I'm glad to help out where I can. And uh, hopefully this was of good use to you guys. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks, guys. Bye.